The Christian worldview offers ten necessary presuppositions for the scientific method to function. A person must therefore recognize and believe these and adhere to them, otherwise they would have no valid reason to conduct science experimentation. The first one is that the universe is a distinct objective reality. This stands in direct contrast to the pagan worldview of deification of nature and denying nature. It's very common in the pagan worldview to view everything as sacred. Um, if everything is sacred and one and some sort of divine essence or form, then nature is not distinct and separate. Also, if you deny nature, it's not objective. Um, for instance, if your view is that nature cannot be trusted because it's just a shadow of a higher reality as Plato had of dualism, or if nature as we see it now is illusionary as it is in Hinduism, and even Christian scientists today would hold that same view, um, nature then is not objective. Um, so you need both of these views that's distinct and objective in order to trust that you can even have experimentation done with what we see and touch and feel and experience in this world. The second belief necessary is that the, la that the laws of nature exhibit order, patterns, and regularity. Um, this order and pattern and regularity begs us to ask the question as to why. For instance, you have the seasons, um, the four seasons that come every year. You ask, well, why, why is this the pl in, in place? And people can then investigate to figure out what, um, what, what's the cause of these patterns. Uh, this order and regularity fits with the third one, which is the laws of nature uniform throughout the physical universe. Uh, not only do we need these patterns and order, but they need to be uniform, meaning uh, this provides a way for us to be able to conduct the same experiment again and again and again throughout time and in different locations trusting that the results yielded would be the same. The fourth one is the physical universe is intelligible. Um, this of course would and the one before number three would go against the pagan worldview which held that the gods were very um, whimsical uh, that they acted in erratic, unstable ways and that their behaviors and emotions would then affect the world here. Because the God of the Bible is unchanging and consistent, um, we can trust that the universe is held together and therefore because He is the highest intelligence, what comes from Him would be intelligible. Five, the world is good, valuable, and worthy of study. If the world was not good, valuable, and worthy of study, there would be no need to conduct experimentation to learn more about it. Um, the Christian worldview offers that as we learn more about the world, ultimately it will bring us to learn more about the Creator who made it. And that since we are compelled to study and learn more about the world. Uh, going with this, of course, the pagan worldview, um, if everything is... Um, if if nature is denied and the gods are crazy there would be no no way to justify that the world we see is valuable of study um, it would almost be like spinning our wills um, to study it um, with that even the pagan worldview of astrology could fit with this one uh, astrology of course would maybe help justify the reason to study um, as we see patterns emerge here on earth maybe we can somehow try to link them up with the stars as astrology um, tries to do but certainly it doesn't motive give us any motivation um, to study there's no real reason to study the things here on earth because we recognize they're just controlled by the stars above so the Christian worldview turns astrology upside down on its head with that one uh, sixth belief that's required for the scientific message or method is because the world is not divine and therefore not a proper object of worship, it can be an object of rational study. And again, that would go directly against the pagan worldview that deifies nature. Uh, the seventh, human beings possess the ability to discover the universe's intelligibility. The Christian worldview offers that mankind was created in the image of God, and with that image of God, um, 
we are given the intellect and ability and means and even the place in the world as God's stewards or um, the place of dominion over creation, uh, we, we then know that by learning um, more about the universe and how it ticks, we can then um, take better care of it, uh, which builds down into some later ones too. Uh, the free agency of the crea creator makes the empirical method necessary. I'm going to read from the book on this one. Uh, the creation illustrates that God, among other things, is a playful artist. For example, he makes different varieties within a particular plant or animal species similar to one another, yet different enough from each other to require careful study and inspire curiosity. Roses and poppies differ widely, yet both are flowers. Bats and bears hardly seem comparable, yet both are mammals. So God, in his freedom, created a very diverse world, um, which obviously hits our senses the um, and brings us to want to learn more about it. Uh, I like an example one of you gave where it was a bunch of breadcrumbs in the woods and we see this and we're compelled to follow it. Number nine, God encourages even propels science through his imperative to humans to take dominion over nature. Um, that fits back to what I shared for number seven. Uh, number 10, the intellectual virtues essential to carrying out the scientific enterprises are part of God's moral laws. This is actually commanded of us, which really means that the Christian worldview spurs us on to the scientific method. Other worldviews at the time before, uh, they, didn't, they didn't possess um, they didn't possess an ethical code that compelled mankind to pursue this type of wisdom. Uh, on the flip side of these ten, you got naturalism, uh, which believes everything is one and material. It's against supernaturalism, meaning that supernatural answers are denied or not accepted to the table. Uh, it believes in scientism, and scientism, of course, means that knowledge can only come to the scientific method, as well as humanism. Uh, so... We know Christianity gave birth to science, but what about naturalism? Does it provide the necessary preconditions for science? Within naturalism, does the world possess order and regularity? I mean, we would see it, but how can we know that's true? Because the world is, an, is uh, the product of random chance. How do we, and it's still technically matter in motion. If humanity's sense organs are the product of random chance, how can they be trusted? What accounts for the laws of nature of logic in a random world? Um, so I believe the naturalists, when you consider these questions, would have to actually borrow upon the beliefs of the Christian worldview in order to pra practice the science in which they claim knowledge can only be arrived. So what does modern day science say about the universe? It says it had a singular beginning. It says the universe is continuously expanding. That matter, energy, and space had a specific beginning that the universe experiences decay, and that the universe will come to an end. Believe it or not, the cosmologies of all ancient manuscripts are at odds with these findings except the Bible. Really good news for us. Um, so what modern day science has confirmed about the universe, um, the Bible has already spoken. Another point here, the anthropic principle. This refers to the scientific observation that the universe exhibits all the necessary and narrowly drawn qualities and characteristics to make human life possible. This is familiar and accepted in the scientific community. So, what do you think? Are science and Christianity enemies based on um, these beliefs that come from the Christian worldview and are essentially necessary in order for the scientific method to even take place. Uh, couple it with the fact that the Bible is not at odds with what modern day um, discoveries say about the universe as well as the fact that um, the anthropic principle essentially screams that the universe uh, was designed for man and we see that 
within Christianity, man is the pinnacle of God's creation, the crown of his creation, if you will. Good stuff for discussion and reflection. Um, I pray that this is helpful for you um, as you recognize that Christianity and science do not have to be at odds with one another when they're both conducted in a way which is not 100% opposed to supernaturalistic explanations.